turn your photo into a beautiful gift for family and friends. Customstitch.net will make a counted cross-stitch pattern from artwork you submit and return it to you in PDF format within 24 hours. Includes color key chart, DMC floss numbers, and floss usage. Visit us today. Today's episode is called, Ring a Ding Ding. After Betty Jo promises never to take off her wedding ring, she drops it down the drain. Original air date, March 23, 1968. to the junction Forget about your cares It is time to relax at the junction Lots of curves You bet And even more When you get to the junction Petticoat Junction There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction Petticoat it is run by Kate, come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe, he's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Sixty-one years since the cotton gin was invented. No, you know. I really don't. And frankly, it's a little embarrassing with all these people around. Oh, honey, this marks the first time that you and I have ever been separated from each other overnight since we've been married. You're kidding. Oh, Steve, don't you think this is important? Oh, yes, it is. When I left Cleveland, it was headlines. Oh, hey, okay, so I just wanted to have a party. We've got to celebrate something. Darling, where it concerns you and me, I'm for a celebration every night. Hey, Steve, how was the Crop Dusters convention? Oh, terrific. The highlight of the whole convention was an exciting film entitled Controlling the Volatility of the Phenoxy Herbicides by Precise Formulation. <laughs> oh, that's the business part of the convention. Tell us about the girl jumping out of the cake. <laughs> well, Joe, you got to remember, this was a Crop Dusters convention. Although we did have a grasshopper jump out of a cupcake. <laughs> Yeah, I'll bet. Say, how about those conventions we used to go on, Sam? Boy, uh, how about them? Huh? Ring a ding ding. <laughs> Razzmatazz. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll never forget this little girl. She was a spitting image of Toby Wing, all decked out in the flapper's dress. And I'm telling you. Now, uh, Joe, she... Joe, I think it's enough to say that we had a rip roar in time. You can <laughs> say that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have to worry about Steve when he goes out of town, do I? I'm afraid you're right. I was never so happy to get back to Hooterville as I was this time. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it'll always be. Steve, hmm? where's your wedding ring? Oh, I, uh, I took it off and forgot to put it back on. Huh. That was a trick old Boswell Guff used to pull. No sooner get out of town and off it come his wedding ring. Not saying that you'd do a trick like that, Steve. <laughs> old Boswell was something, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Old Bos was about the most single married man I ever knew. Yeah. <laughs> If he didn't take off his wedding ring, he'd cover it with a cigar bag. <laughs> and that time in Cedar Falls, he really came up with a winner. He covered his ring with a Band-Aid. <laughs> Not only attracted attention, but he got sympathy as well. Uncle Joe. Huh? I think we'd all like to hear about Steve, his trip, and where he went, and what he saw. Wouldn't we, girls? Huh? Oh, sure, Aunt Helen. We'd love to hear about him. Bobby Joe? Oh, me too. Steve, tell us all about your ring. Trip. <laughs> Betty Joe, I can 
hardly wait till Steve leaves on another trip. I mean, yeah. comes back from another trip. It's <laughs> a wonderful evening. Oh, no, 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 no. Inside. An ending, love. B.J. and S. 1967. Well, while I was in the city, I had it engraved, as per your request. You've been after me to do it for a long time, so we'd have matching rings, remember? Oh, of course, darling. And it's beautiful. But why weren't you wearing it? Oh. Well, when the jeweler gave it back to me, I guess I was so excited about buying this that I absentmindedly put it in my pocket. Oh, darling. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, oh, please forgive me. For what? Oh, for the way I was acting. Why, because you were pouting? You're entitled to that. I know, but I was also having thoughts I shouldn't have had. Jealous thoughts. Okay, no more jealous thoughts. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to take your ring, and I'm going to put it on like this, and I'm going to seal it like this. And you're never, never to take it off again. I'll buy that. And now I want you to seal my wedding ring. And it'll never, never, never leave my finger as long as I live. Is it a deal? It's a deal. Now let's seal the deal with a seal. <laughs> Very thoughtful of you to help out. And you too. Here, run an errand for me and get rid of this big bone. <laughs> well, this is the least I could do after the party you threw last night. I think everybody had a good time, don't you? Oh, I'm sure they did. Outside of the fuss you and Steve had about the ring, it was great. Bobby Joe, are you hinting to find out what happened with the ring after everybody left? Oh, I'm not hinting about anything. Good. I'd just like to know what happened. Did you and Steve get into a real hassle? <laughs> no. Everything worked out beautifully. Oh. Well, Steve wasn't wearing his wedding ring because he took it off to have it engraved. Which, incidentally, has been my idea for a long time. I've been after him to do it for months. Engraved? Yeah, you know, like my wedding ring. Well, no, I didn't know about that. You mean I've never shown you? Well, no. Well, I guess with the hassle of the wedding and everything and the excitement, I forgot. Well, this is something you've got to see. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, it went down the drain. Golly. Double golly. Huh? Oh, I just remembered I was never, never supposed to take it off. Well, why? Because of Steve. He wouldn't let you? How mean. <laughs> oh, no, it was my idea. We got into a big thing last night, and, and we vowed we'd never, never take them off as long as we lived. Oh, that sounds serious. If it had been in the olden days, we would have written it in blood. Mm. <laughs> Maybe I can get the cover off the drain. Here, try a fork. Oh, thanks. See, it seems to be stuck. <laughs> Not making forks like they used to. <laughs> I have to get it. I just have to. This is the most precious thing I own. Maybe this will work. I got the cover off. Good girl. Now, if I can just reach my arm down far enough. Nothing. There must be some way of getting it out of there. I know. Why don't we take a magnet, tie it to the end of the string, and lower it? Bobby Joe, my wedding ring is made of iron. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's your tough luck. <laughs> Here, I'll try. Gotta have it. I just got to. How you doing? I lost my bracelets. <laughs> oh. Do you have any suggestions about what I should do, Aunt Helen? Well, darling, I think you should tell Steve and see if he can dismantle the pipes and locate the ring. That seems the simplest way. Yeah, but this time, the simplest way isn't the best way. I just can't tell Steve about this. I just can't. Well, whatever happened to your plumbing ability? Well, there was a time when there wasn't a thing around her she couldn't fix. I already tried that, but I couldn't dismantle the pipe. The wrench I had was too small. I saw a large wrench in Uncle Joe's toolbox in the kitchen closet. I thought about that, but then I'd have to ask Uncle Joe to borrow the wrench, and he'd want to know what I wanted it for, and when I told him, he'd want to help me, and... 
Well, I love him and I appreciate his thoughtfulness, but he hung a picture for me and we were lucky. We planned on knocking out the wall anyway. <laughs> Why don't you just borrow the wrench and then if he asks about it, we'll tell him where it is and by that time it'll all be over. Maybe you can get Floyd to give you a hand. Oh, excellent idea. I'll go get it now. Quite a bargain. Mm. Hi, Uncle Joe. Hi, Betty Jo. Uh, thanks, Aunt Helen, for letting me have a loaf of your uh, homemade raisin bread. <laughs> homemade raisin bread? That's my favorite. Just the smell of a fresh loaf sets me off. Let me have a snip. Oh, uh, Uncle Joe, I've got to... You must have loaded this with raisins. Raisins are loaded with iron. <laughs> I'm sorry, Uncle Joe. I borrowed it without asking because I knew you'd want to help, and being so busy the way you are, I didn't want to impose. You're not imposing. I'll give you a hand. That's what I'm here for. What's the matter? You got a plumbing problem? I dropped my wedding ring down the kitchen drain. Big deal. You'll have that ring out of the drain on your finger like that. <laughs> you know, it's funny how one little dinky thing can get you all fouled up. Yeah, like forgetting to turn off the water. <laughs> Uncle Joe, look. He saved his valuable. <laughs> Uncle Joe, hurry up! <laughs> it still won't budge. I got the pipe tree routed and the pump hooked up. We'll have this pumped out of here and nothing flat. You ready? Yes, Uncle Joe, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm gonna turn on the pump. <laughs> Uncle Joe, turn it off, turn it off. What's that? I said turn it off. Okay. Hey, that's kind of pretty. <laughs> Uncle Joe. Oh, yeah. Sarah, Betty Joe Elliott, would you get me Pex Plumbing in Pixley? Uh, and please hurry. Thank you. Sounds bad. Mm-hmm. Oh, I sure do appreciate your letting me put this in our account. I'm kind of short right now. I understand. Um, Mr. Peck, please. Oh, well, the moment he comes in, will you have him rush right over to the Elliott place near Hooterville and tell him to hurry? This is an emergency. Thank you. Getting a plumber from Pixley? You must be in a spot. Well, we haven't got one in Hooterville. Oh, I know, but Steve's pretty clever. When he gets home from work... Steve isn't going to know about this. One of those things, huh? Oh, I'd be glad to give you a helping hand. Oh, thanks, Mr. Drucker, but I've had it with helping hands up to here. Or at least up to here. Okay, but it's going to cost you, and you just mentioned you're a little short right now. Oh, well, I've got some mad money put away for just such emergencies. About four dollars in the cookie jar. Four dollars? I can't even leave a shop for four dollars. Well, Mr. Drucker, don't say that. Well, he charges by the hour. Let's see. From the time he leaves his shop until he gets to your place on that old backfire road and then does the job, it's going to be about... Oh, wow. Mr. Drucker, you're making this sound awful. I'm, I'm just pointing out the facts, that's all. You're pointing out a catastrophe. But I've got to have a plumber. There's no going around that. I'll think of something. I'll just have to. There's the cannibal now. Bye. Bye. Billy Joe. Hi, Betty Joe. You've got to help me. We're in bad trouble. We're in bad trouble? But you're still my sister, aren't you? Well, sure, but I'm not. Come on, we've got no time to waste. <laughs> This 
sir. Yes, oh, wonderful, oh, wonderful. Bless you. It's an heirloom, you know. Mm, an heirloom. <laughs> Unending love, B.J. and S., You were too old, mate. I mean, I thought you were a married lady. <laughs> oh, that's right. We are. Oh, we are. <laughs> this ring is for our niece. Our niece? <laughs> we just wanted to see how it would look. Uh, this tea doesn't even fit me. Uh, maybe I could try it on you. We'll make it a little more definite. Oh, uh, please, mister. I need to have my ring. My husband will be home, and if he sees I'm sorry, don't... but once you pull, I could get you for fraud. Now, when you come up with a balance of $11, the ring's yours today. You don't feel too badly, Betty Jo. Hey, Joe, look. <laughs> don't get any ideas, Floyd. They're way too old for you. <laughs> Gee, it seemed like a good idea. Well, I thought so, too. Me and my ideas. Hi, ladies. Have you seen Betty Jo? Uncle Joe, I am Betty Jo. No kidding. Boy, your marriage hasn't done you a bit of good. <laughs> oh. I flew him around today, and Joe wanted me to come over and give you a hand with his plumbing. Oh, thanks. The plumbing's been taken care of. Then what are you so sad about? The plumber took my wedding ring as security because I couldn't pay my whole bill. He did. How much was it? Eleven dollars. Who's your friend? Well, that's Billy Joe. Jim <laughs> Sangle ain't doing too much for her either. <laughs> oh, I see. You're in a get up. <laughs> Seem to be stuck. What's that? Then it seems to be stuck. Yeah. I guess that's a reasonable deduction. <laughs> Only digging myself in deeper. Boy, when I... <laughs> when I took this job, I must have had rocks in my head. We can get that out of there for you, mister. You can how? It'll get a long rope, run it through the bushes, and attach it to the back of the cannonball. Yeah, that should do it. I got just the rope in the baggage car. 
What's the matter? There'll be a slight charge for this job. Well, Joe, he's here in the valley. Floyd, there'll be a slight charge. Okay, two bucks. This job's worth more than two bucks. By the wear and tear on the cannonball. That's got to be at least five bucks. <laughs> okay, five bucks. Look, it's costing me money just being here. I got other calls to make today. Then let's see, there's the rental on the rope. That's got to come to at least four. Nine dollars. <laughs> now look, Buster, I wasn't born yesterday. You just want to sit here? <laughs> okay, nine bucks. <laughs> let's see, then, there's your and my time, Floyd. That's got to come to at least two dollars. Well, what do you know? It all adds up to an even eleven dollars. <laughs> Okay, I get the message. Get me out of here and I'll give you the ring back. I think maybe we ought to have it for security before we make a move. I'll get the rope. Oh, thanks, Uncle Joe. You're a doll. Oh, I don't know nothing. You should know better than to try to play my game. <laughs> we should tie that rope on here. What gets me is we've had such a dry season this year. I mean, how did the water get there in the first place so the truck could get stuck? That's the spot where Uncle Joe ran the hose when he pumped out the kitchen. <laughs> Honest, that's exactly what happened. Eddie, Joe, the way you talk, it sounds like I didn't plan all this. How'd it go today? Oh, it was a day like all days, filled with those events which illuminate our lives. <laughs> well, there's something I got to talk to you about. Right now? Right now. Well, can't it wait until after dinner? I'm fixing Swiss cake just the way you like it, with mushroom gravy and mashed Honey, potatoes. hold the commercial. I've got to get this other out of the way first. Yes? Well, today, when I was mixing the batch of insecticide, uh, some of the liquid seeped down, and got all over my gloves and well, got my wedding ring all messy. So I forgot myself and I took it off. You did? <laughs> well, yeah, I did. What are you so happy about? Oh, I'm not happy. You mean after the vows we took last night, you took off your wedding ring? Honey, I knew you'd feel this way about it. That's why I thought it'd be best to get it out in the open like this. I mean, after all, we are a matured married couple. We are? <laughs> we are. Well, here you go. Seal it. And it will never, ever come off again. Oh, that's what I like to hear. Say, honey, by the way, I, uh, I just passed a little old lady trudging through the woods. <laughs> well, wasn't that Billy Joe? What, what, is she in a play or something? Here. Huh? Seal my ring. What? Go ahead, seal it. I'll tell you all about it after we've had Swiss steak and gravy with mushrooms and, and mashed potatoes. <laughs> Thank you. 